There's a few things that I have learned after being a full-time pet and people photographer for over 10 years here in Colorado. And one of the things is that no day is the same. All the days are different. And so if I were to pick a day, I would pick a Tuesday. And so let's take a look at what a day in the life of me as a professional photographer is on a Tuesday. Now I would say this is a typical Tuesday, but no day is typical. They are all different. And as we kind of look through my day, I want to sprinkle in some of the things that I have learned and insights that I've made about being in business and being a photographer for a decade. Stay connected. Every Tuesday here at the studio, I have what I call a coffee hour. I get the Keurig out, I get coffee, tea, cocoa, and I do a story on Instagram. I let everybody know that they're welcome to come in and just hang out with me, bring their dog. Uh, we could talk business or life, whatever we want to do. This is a great time to just connect and I find that as a solopreneur, and you probably find this too, we don't have a lot of opportunity to connect. Maybe you work out of your home office like I do most of the week. I'm only here two full days a week. Or you are in a isolated part of the country. Whatever your reasons are, we're not in an office with a bunch of other people. So it's important to really stay connected. And that's not only for our you know, mental health, it's also just to feel like we're part of a community and to reach out to that community and to invite them into your world and you be part of theirs and opportunities will arise from that. So it's really important to stay connected as much as you possibly can. Know your equipment. <laughs> you need to really know your equipment. I had a friend from Camera Club drop in the other day and he says, oh, I've gotten some new light sets and my sister wants me to take some pictures of her dogs. I've never done this before. Give me some advice. And he had about 10 minutes. So I said, oh boy, I have about 200 videos on uh, YouTube, but I'll help you out for a minute. And one of the things that he said was that he had gotten new equipment, but he wasn't going to use it yet. He wasn't going to use it yet. <laughs> so. I said, no, 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 get your equipment out right now. Get to know it. Practice, practice, practice before you have all these dogs at your house that you're trying to photograph. Know your equipment so you're not fiddling around with it while the dog is doing all of its things because there's too much to keep track of at a photo session to be fiddling with your equipment. So practice as much as you possibly can. Know where all the buttons are. Know what settings you like. Know which lenses you're going to use. Practice all the time. But also know that it's okay to not be the best. Um, a lot of us are average in a lot of things that we do. We don't have to be a game, blue ribbon, award winning, everything all the time. We need to create something that speaks to the heart of our clients or if we're taking it for ourselves to ourselves. So sometimes that might be something that technically isn't the most perfect award-winning photo, but it means something. So it's always more important for those photos to really connect with someone than to win awards or have all the technical things absolutely perfectly right with them. And they don't all have to be, you know, like Peter McKinnon says, bangers, which he doesn't go for that anymore either. But not every photo you take is going to be award winning, but it's all going to be impactful. So keep that in mind. And another one is it's okay to be boring. I have the same light set up almost every single time here at the studio. And that is what showcases my clients the best. It is my style. It's what I like. It's easy for me. It's easy for it to be around the dogs and cats and the people. It's flexible. I have really found a simple lighting setup that works for me. And even though sometimes I feel like it might be getting a boring, it's not. This is all new to your clients. They've never experienced this before in a lot of cases. So it's okay to be boring. Now on the flip side, it's okay to learn new things too. Uh, uh, but go out and practice and learn that and maybe do that as a model call or a personal project before you integrate it into your studio. But there's always kind of 
this is your boring and this is your creative side. So figure out where those two things can be fulfilled. If you're a business owner, commit to the admin work, just commit to it. One of the things that is kind of disappointing when you first start a creative business like photography is that very little of it is actually photographing the animals. You have lots and lots of admin work to do. This is, this is your processing sales. It's marketing. It's talking to your accountant. It's, you know, keeping up on subscriptions and doing your learning. There's so much more. Um, admin type stuff than you're ever going to realize that there is, but it's okay. It can be fun. It can be rewarding in its own way and creative. So when you go into a photography business, just know there's going to be a lot of admin work and that is just normal and it's okay. That said, once you get to the point where you can hire out or delegate some of the responsibilities you've realized you just really don't like doing or just aren't that good at, like for me, that's my accounting and bookkeeping. That was the first person I hired was that person because I was just not getting it right and it was causing me more trouble trying to fix my mistakes. So even though there is admin work, at some point you'll be able to hire out for some of it. And along those lines, get help with anything that you might need help with. There's a lot of ways that you could use help that you may not even be thinking of. So for instance, I have an assistant, Frank, always comes with me to my bigger photo sessions. And that has been amazing and very affordable. I was able to build that right into the price I was already presenting to my clients. It, there might be other things like my sister is so amazing, Brie. She comes out and helps me with all kinds of things. And again, it might be an accountant. It could be my editor. So, or it could be, you know, being in a community like Pro Pet Photog. So figure out where you can use help and it's okay to ask for it. Most businesses can't sustain on just one person, no matter what they say. There are other people helping in the background. Another thing is to not be disappointed in low sales. So on this particular Tuesday, I had two sales meetings and they were both drastically under what I aim for as my average. And that's just transparent truth. And it happens. It totally happens. It's not a reflection on you as a person or as a business person. An average is an average right? It is taking your highs, it's taking your lows and dividing it by how many you did. So last week, or you know, this week when I was filming this Tuesday day in the life, the day before I had a, a double my average sale, but the day that of filming, I had two sales that were below average. So they all balanced out. So just know that sometimes that's going to happen. I had a client that's her dog needed major surgery and her budget, of course, had to go to her dog. We have plans for her to order a bigger print in the new year. And that's okay. That's okay. So try not to beat yourself up when you get a sale that's lower than you really expected. Just keep moving forward and use that as a a learning experience. So for me, it made me realize that there are a couple of things on my price list that I didn't want anymore. And then there was one thing on my price list I needed to add back in. And so kind of take a look at it and say, what could have made this better? And what was out of my control? As far as sales goes, that's just one tiny piece of advice I have for you there. Another thing that I have really learned is to be flexible. And in that, I mean in what you are able to offer to your clients. And I usually, what I usually tell people is that you are going to market a certain thing. So I'm going to market to do a full photo session. You know, maybe it's a family, maybe it's just the pets. We're going to do your typical portrait session. But when people say, hey, I need a couple of doll, dog dolls to be photographed. Can you do that? Yes, I can. Uh, I am having a Christmas party. Can you come do the photo booth? I sure can. Now I know how to do that. I have done that. And I felt comfortable in my skill level to be able to offer that. It's not something I advertise. 
but it's something I did say yes to. So stay flexible. I offer, I have done so many different projects before that I've never marketed to and I've never shared, but it was a fun experience for me to learn or it was something that I said, no, okay, I tried it and I don't wanna do it. <laughs> and just to be able to fill, fulfill the needs of your clients. So on this particular day, I did photograph some dog dolls uh, because they needed that for marketing. And this is an ongoing client that I have that I do all kinds of other photography for. So I said, of course, yeah, bring them in. We'll have fun. And we did. Except that sometimes things are going to be a mess. And I don't just mean dog hair on everything. That's kind of a given. But sometimes it's just a mess. I had a photo session um, a few days before filming this video and I had just kind of brought everything in and dropped it on the floor. I was so tired that I knew I would just get to it on the next time I was in the studio. I didn't have any clients booked and I would get to it. And that was okay. It was okay to just leave that in a stack for a couple of days. Sometimes it's gonna be a mess when we, you know, threw a, the grand opening party, there was stuff everywhere. And one thing that I really love, like when I clean out my office, when I do anything uh, that's kind of like making a mess, I feel like that's the, the height of creativity. Wow, I'm cleaning things out, I'm organizing, I'm seeing what I have. This big mess means I'm making big progress. So it could be in a physical sense, it could be in a, a mental sense, it could be a data sense. Sometimes things are a mess and that's okay. Make boundaries. I either bring a lunch or I get tacos next door, <laughs> but I make sure they take a lunch break every single day. And I know there's a lot of people that don't do that just because they're too busy, but you gotta take care of yourself. If you're not getting the energy intake that you need, you can't possibly output energy for any of your projects. So set boundaries, make sure you have a lunch time, make you have a starting time and ending time. A big one for me is I will not edit until two o'clock in the morning. I see that glorified online so much like, oh, it's editing season, it's 2 a.m. and I'm editing your photos. No, please don't do that. You need to set boundaries. That is my personal time. Does that mean like maybe I'll work a little bit on another day or, you know, I'll move it around, but I make sure that I have a good amount of time to eat my meals with my family or when I'm here at work or take the dog for a walk every day or I don't take business calls after a certain time or these are the days that I do these things for my clients. Since I'm here in the studio on Tuesdays and Fridays, that's when we do studio sessions. That's when we do sales meeting. That's when we do consultations. Anything that can be done in the studio, those, those two days are what we book first. So make sure you're taking care of yourself and you're setting boundaries. People will actually appreciate that. Um, set quality standards. Well, I said you don't have to be the best photographer, but when you deliver their order, make sure it is in tip top shape. Whenever I get a order in, I painstakingly open the whole thing. And with my lab, there is a lot of packaging. <laughs> so make sure you have a clear area. Make sure any tape isn't anywhere near the prints. Make sure you take it out of all the packaging. Look at it and make sure it's flat and there's no bubbles or scratches or anything that on the print or on the frame or on the backing, there's no holes. All of the hanging hardware is there. The colors and the exposure look good on the prints. Make sure you have a quality inspection check on everything that you're sending out the door. And that's digitals included. So depending on what size digital you provide, is there, did you do any bit of cleanup that you said that you would do? Did you take away anything distracting from the image? Is it cropped properly? How is the noise level? So just really make sure that when you hand this precious piece of art to them, that it is exactly what you said you'd deliver. I haven't been very good at this lately, but send cards, um, I, my system is supposed to be where I send a follow-up card to everyone. Thank you so much for your order. I loved hanging out with you and your pets. And um, it was just a lovely time. 
on and on, right? So a card. And, but those are good to have at every session, but also sympathy cards. So the prints that I unpacked that day were from a dog that ha passed away two weeks after our session. And we knew this was her bucket list photo session, but it still happened so quickly. And so I made sure that with her order, she got a sympathy card in with it. Usually I give a little packet of treats, but that's the only dog that they had. So please try to do those personal touches for people. Send them a card or slip it into their order. At your photo sessions, always be encouraging. Always tell them how great they're doing. Never say, ooh, don't do that. Ooh, never mind. I didn't like that pose. Just say, oh, okay, well, we tried that. I have another idea. Let's try this next. Don't ever make a weird face when you look at the back of your camera and just kind of keep talking. Keep the keep the energy up as far as positivity. You're doing great. The dog's doing great. This is going exactly how I pictured, especially when it's chaotic, because that is how sessions are. But they're very, very embarrassed. And they're not sure what, how this is supposed to go. And everybody thinks their, their animal's kind of misbehaving in some way or the other. I always reassure them all the time, the dog is doing great. This is exactly what dogs do. I don't expect any different, so it's fine. So I try to put people at ease during the whole thing. And if I have people in the photos, you're looking amazing. That's a model smile. All right, keep that look. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Always be encouraging at your sessions. Obviously, you're going to be positive to people all the time, but especially at the sessions, that's the most vulnerable time that you're with them, uh, that they're not sure how to like perform, you know, kind of the where do my hands go. <laughs> so be encouraging to them and their pets all the time. Collaborate. I told you how every Tuesday I do my coffee meetings, but I go beyond that. I absolutely love collaborating with other businesses. I recently was involved in co-hosting a pet-based, like a dog pop-up market. So me and a dog trainer that does agility, we had this at her facility. And we invited all these other vendors in to set up booths to sell their dog-themed gifts and products. It was so fun. I got a chance to meet all of those people. And if you follow this channel, you know that I offer um, business portraits, headshots. I offer commercial videography. I think it's a great thing to add to your services. And those are all now connections. We invited them. We hung out for four hours. We made the community happy. We had fun. Great, a great example of collaboration. So always be thinking of how you can collaborate and partner with people. Be generous. I have done YouTube, I've done live streaming, I have given classes. Share your knowledge, share your wisdom. I have all kinds of freebies that I send out with my newsletters. There is so, so, so much to know that there is no way all of your knowledge is going to be stolen or anything like that. Just be generous, have classes. Do Facebook Lives for your clients. Send them an email about here's the best way that you can photograph your snapshots of your dog. I always say snapshots with your phone. Uh, just absolutely be generous there. You will lose nothing in being generous. Uh, I know a lot of us are kind of worried like, oh, what if this and what if that? Just you're the owner, right? It all comes down to you. If you're worried about someone stealing the digital images, well, only give them the ones they ordered. <laughs> Uh, the ones, what about the ones you put online? Okay, well, those are only the ones they ordered. Decide whether you're going to put a watermark or not. Are you going to be upset if they add it to a local contest? Just be generous. If they've bought it, it's theirs. If someone wants to learn something, share. Share. There's no way that they'll be able to completely do exactly what you do, and you'll be giving a service, and they're just going to be so appreciative. Surround yourself with people who are cheerleaders. <laughs> you, this could be from joining the Pro Pet Photog Community Center. This could be from being in the Facebook group or any kind of Facebook group where it's supportive. If you start feeling yucky after you're in a Facebook group, get 
out. They don't get any better. Only be in Facebook groups that lift you up and that you are generous and lift others up. You could go to local networking groups. You could go to coffee times, camera clubs. You could talk to the family members and friends that support you and your pet photography endeavors. Be sure to surround yourself with people who are encouraging, uplifting, and are cheerleaders for you. I can't emphasize that enough. I've had family in my life that have boohooed my efforts and it'll sink you to the bottom quick. You know your worth. I know your worth. <laughs> and I'm here to cheerlead for you. So if you don't have that person, just you know, stick around this channel and you'll see me cheerleading for you, okay? And then the last one is have patience and grace with yourself. There are so many things to learn when you're a pet photographer and then if you decide to go pro as a photographer, there's going to be ups and downs as you've seen all day in this one day vlog of mine. There are ups and downs to everything that you do from the photography to the client interactions to your pricing to locations to the equipment to the settings. Everything is a learning experience. There are so many moving parts to what you are trying to do. And we don't learn things overnight. You, nobody is instantly 100% good at everything. No matter what we show you online, what you see online, there is no way that we're all instantly awesome and 100% A-game people. We are all learning and you are learning. Everything you do will have layers of learning to it. Think about where you were six months ago, a year ago. If you looked at those photos would, and looked at today's photos, would you say, oh wow, there's been quite the improvement. That's what I'm talking about. If you have upped your sales over the last year and you look back at last year's sales and go, gosh, I'm doing so much better. Count your wins and then give yourself grace when you feel like maybe something didn't go how you wanted it to or failed or just fell kind of flat. Give yourself the grace and the, and the patience with yourself and your business and your efforts and your endeavors. Okay, that's my last one. I'm sure I have more information to share with you. Obviously stick around this channel. And you're gonna hear all kinds of content like this and otherwise. Uh, look into propetphotog.com. I have all kinds of things in there and more coming up in the future from free to paid, all right? So I've got a lot of layers in there for you as well. I know you can do it. I, you're on the path. If you're on YouTube right now, learning about all this, you got this, okay? All right, I am one of your biggest cheerleaders. So go out and have fun with it. And as always, I wish you many woofs, purrs, and T-R-E-A-T-S's.